Hey guys, it's the Nerd Next Door, and now that we've talked about detecting extrasolar planets, I wanted to talk about the planets that are really close to us, but are also really cool. So basically our local stellar neighborhood and what's in it. So in this model, you can see that I've actually drawn up how many planets we know are going around this star right now. And this is our local stellar neighborhood. So all of these stars are within like 60 light years of us, which is not that far away. Like Tau Ceti right here is really cool and it's very close. It's only 12 light years away. So it has between four and six terrestrial planets. What that means is they are planets that you could stand on. I don't wanna say Earth-like because I don't want people to get the impression that there's water there and like animals and people and stuff, but they are terrestrial planets like Mercury and Venus and Mars and Earth. And at least one of them is skirting around the habitable zone. So we can actually radio that system, send like a radio message to that star system and be like, hey, how's it going? We're Earth, don't attack us and it would get there in 12 years. And if there was someone there and they understood radio waves and they were able to contact us back and they were interested, okay, I'm gonna be optimistic again. If there was somebody there, they could radio us back and we'd get it in 12 years. Now I know that that sounds like a really long time, but it's actually not, not in astronomical terms. Anything that happens in a lifetime, in a generation, you should feel happy about, really. Anything that has happened in your lifetime, you can generally, with when it comes to astronomy, you can generally be like, yes, booyah, humanity. The other thing about the Tau Ceti system is Tau Ceti itself, the star, is very, very similar to the sun. And it's not exactly like the sun, but it is a G-class star. So it's a yellow star, and it's about the same size. It is, the, me the metallicity is not as high, but it's stable. It's yellow, so that's actually really cool as well. The Gliese 581 system, which is about 22 light years away, has somewhere between four and six planets. And Gliese 581, you see it in the news all the time. It's like, there's a new Earth-like planet around Gliese. The Gliese system is actually a very exciting system. And so you see it in the news a lot. Again, has a lot of terrestrial planets, just like Tau Ceti and some of those planets are in the habitable zone. Now that habitable zone is closer to the star because Gliese 581 is a red dwarf star. So it's not as bright, it's not as hot. If something evolved on there, how would the light, basically the difference in light, how would that affect evolution? Because that's a, that's a really interesting thing to think about. Now the Gliese 667C system is also really interesting as well. And you'll notice that I, none of the other ones that I brought up had um, letters at the end of it. So Gliese 667C, what that means is it's the third star in a trinary system, in a triple star system. So there's actually three stars and they're going around each other and 667C is over here and around that star are planets. Now the third one discovered, C, so we call it 667C little c, big C, little c, big C for the star, little c for the planet is actually in the habitable zone. And it is a terrestrial planet, however, it is pretty big. It's about four times as massive as Earth. It's probably a hot terrestrial planet, but if there was anything on there, you know, the gravity, you couldn't really go visit it because the gravity would just crush you. You'd get off the planet and be like, oh my gosh, I weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds and it would not be great, but still interesting and very close to us. Other potentially habitable extrasolar planets exist around the HD 40307 system, which is 40 light years away, and the Gliese 163 system, which is almost 50 light years away, so that's pushing it. So some of those planets, I know, it, again, it sounds like they're so far away, but they're not. Astronomically, this is in our own backyard, so we should just go out there to, to radio these planets and Hope there are people there because that would just make my heart so happy. But realistically, what we really need to do is just get better and better technology so we can actually study these planets from a distance and know more about them. I can't believe that I live in a time where we can actually pick up these planets, these planets that are going around other stars and know that they're there and know how massive they are and how close to the star they are and maybe what their atmosphere is like. And it's just, it's mind-blowingly awesome, and I am just really sad for all the people that died before the mid-1990s. Well, it's good to be a geek. It's good to play the freak. It's good to come my mom and watch every other week. As far as I can see, it's good to play the week. Let's stay on painting miniatures, tell us who are three. If 
we actually got some sort of radio message out there and we received a radio message back in 24 years, it would be mind blowing. It would be so cool. And yes, it's very cool. I think we should do that. The end. End of my story.